In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how you can create uh, this, this project of invisibility cloak. I'll just show you how the program looks like and uh, I'll just give a brief overview about it and I'll then walk you through the code. So as you can see, uh, this uh, this part uh, that is uh, you know taken by this uh, cloth is uh, seem to seems to be invisible. What it basically does is it captures the background and then it uh, detects the cloth. Uh, cloth is uh, cloak is in this case just uh, a red colored cloth. Uh, you can take any red colored cloth like a towel or uh, a t-shirt or something like that. But uh, make sure that the cloth is completely plain in uh, plain red colored and not uh, textured or printed or something like that uh, to avoid uh, you know uh, if you take some textured or printed cloth uh, you'll be seeing some uh, uh, noise in, uh, in this uh, section of the cloak so make sure that it is plain in color plain red in color so what the program does is it uh, you know, uh, captures the live feed from the webcam and it uh, when a person appears to hold a cloak that is the red colored cloth it uh, what it does is it just substitutes the section of the cloak with uh, the corresponding background as you can see uh, in the normal background it uh, it some looks something like this without the cloak but uh, with the cloak also it looks the similar itself Okay, so quickly fire up your favorite ID. You can use uh, pretty much any ID, but I'm using PyCharm here. So I'll just create a new file, a uh, new Python file, and name it say cloak dot cloak and a hyphen tutorial. And now, if you're using PyCharm, you don't need to specify the dot py extension. It will automatically do for you. So I'll just hit enter and uh, open this. Uh, it will create this file for me. So the first thing I'll need to do is import all the libraries. Uh, the three libraries that we'll be needing is NumPy, CV2 and Time. So I'll just quickly import uh, all three libraries. Import NumPy as MP. I'll increase the font size a bit. Yes. And the next thing I'll need to import is the CV2. Import time, and the next thing you need to do is uh, you need to capture the live uh, feed from the webcam. So I'll just create a variable called cap cv2 dot uh, video capture, and now uh, the parameters here will be zero for me because uh, zero uh, corresponds to the primary webcam or uh, primary webcam that is connected to your uh, uh, device uh, that is the laptop or the computer so zero generally in laptops corresponds to the inbuilt uh, webcam uh, but if you are using an external webcam you can uh, also do uh, one here one here so but i'm uh, i do not have any external webcams attached to my laptop so i'll just do it zero and the next thing we need to decide is the codex. So to do that, I'll just create this variable called fork. Well, cv2 dot video writer, uh, video writer fork underscore fork. So in this, I'll need to provide this extension called xvid. <coughs> now you need to uh, save the video file. Uh, that is the video file contains the feed from the webcam to do that I'll create a variable called out and I'll store the video I'll store the feed from uh, the webcam in, in a video format so I'll just use this uh, function video writer and the parameters here will be the video name the codec uh, the frame rate and the window size so it will be generally I'll just give it a name say invisibility cloak 
dot avi dot avi is the uh, extension for the video and i'll just uh, say the codec for uh, fork is this uh, variable this variable which has this uh, codec uh, specified and the frame rate will be 20 and the window size will be 640 pixels in width and 480 pixels in height so that is the window size and after this i'll just give uh, halt the execution by two seconds so this just totally depends on you because uh, you generally it is better to give a uh, two second of halt uh, after this step because uh, once this uh, this line executes uh, the webcam will be on and uh, it will be capturing the live feed uh, what, what generally happens is when webcam turns on uh, it is uh, not quite stable so uh, when you give this delay uh, the webcam is a bit stable and then you can continue with the further execution of the program so now we need to capture a background to do that I'll just create this variable called background equals and I'll, I'll initialize with it with zero and now I need to you know create a stable background to do that I'll just do say for I in range 30 I'll be iterating it for 30 uh, times background equals cap dot create so what this line does is it captures the background and uh, stores the you know information or the image in this variable called the background and after that I'll need to I need to have a while loop and now what this while loop will do is uh, uh, okay so the till here the till here uh, the code uh, the program will you know capture the background but uh, after capturing the background and uh, after capturing the background I need to you know uh, when the person uh, holding the cloak appears I'll need to perform some operations so to do that I'll have this while loop and I'll say I'll give a condition when cap dot um, cap is opened when cap is opened as in the until uh, the webcam is capturing some video or the feed it will this while loop will keep on running uh, that is uh, the it will constantly keep looking for the cloak and uh, uh, as as uh, the moment it finds the cloak it will uh, you know uh, substitute the with, substitute the cloak part with the background so to do that i'll just say ret return image and image equals cap dot read so now you can see i've used cap dot read two times once here and uh, once here so this line reads the background and uh, this line reads the image uh, image here is the person that is holding the cloak so to capture that we'll be holding you know we'll be using this uh, line and i'll just give a condition to break it so if not a fret then i'll just break the loop and exit off exit from the loop so now uh, we need to uh, understand something called color space. So color space is generally the format or the number of colors that is uh, you know available in the image or something like that. So um, there are uh, typically three color spaces available. Um, HSV, uh, HSV that stands for uh, HSV that stands for hue, saturation, and values. Uh, hue refers to the color, saturation refers to the darkness of the color and lightness of the color and value uh, refers to the brightness. So this is how uh, we are, um, this color space is what we are uh, operating on and using it uh, to you know demonstrate the thing and uh, the other color format is RGB. Most people will, knowing, will be knowing this uh, color space, uh, this is uh, red, green and blue. These are the basic colors and uh, every color is pretty much derived from these three basic colors. So we're not uh, using this color, but uh, 
what the webcam does is it uh, by default it captures the video or the live feed and the RGB color space so we need to convert that into HSV color space to operate on it uh, so we'll be doing that now to do that I'll just uh, create a variable called HSV CV2 dot CVT color what this does is uh, it converts color uh, the input uh, this uh, function takes two parameters so uh, the input image and uh, the flag that uh, you need to specify flag that specifies uh, from which co color space to which color space should uh, the function convert uh, the image image or the input so we need to uh, you know operate on this image so I'll just pass it here image and uh, I want this to convert from uh, uh, BG, RGB format to uh, HSV format. To do that, I'll just use this flag called CV2 dot color to HSV BGR to HSV HSV. So this, uh, what this line does is it converts the color space of the image or the uh, feed from the webcam from BGR to HSV format. So we will be operating on that values. So now after, uh, so why are we doing this is uh, uh, typical because uh, generally what happens is uh, operating, operating on HSV color space is uh, comparatively easier than operating on uh, RGB color space so that is the reason why we are doing this and so as I, uh, so like I said HSV is a huge saturation and value so it will have three values uh, correspond respectively of uh, a value for a numerical value for H a numerical value for S and uh, same goes to V as well so we need to define the HSV values HSV values this is just a comment line so it does not affect the execution of execution of the flow of the program so so we just need to you know define HSV values for red color because uh, red color is the color of the cloak that we are using in the demonstration so I'll just uh, so uh, when you uh, when you generally uh, consider a color it will have variations of it as in the light lighter version the darker version and stuff like that so to uh, uh, you know recognize a set of values set of colors from red we'll be using this step that is lower red equals np dot array and the array consists of 0 120 and 70 so what this align I'll just uh, you know this will be upper red and the value here will be 10 and it will be 255 it will be 255 here as well so what these two lines mean mean is that we are uh, you know uh, uh, indicating or we are uh, instructing the program the uh, compiler or the interpreter that uh, uh, the program should uh, you know consider the red color that ranges from h value 0 to h value 10 so how will you know that uh, this red color has value from h value from 0 to 10 is uh, from the color uh, color circle or the color model hsv color model you can just go google it and you can pretty much learn more about it and you can also see that the s value has changed from 120 to 255 uh, 255 is the maximum value for uh, this um, color because uh, uh, technically it is 360 0 to 360 but uh, since this open CV is in 8 bit uh, as in the it uh, only considers 8 bit uh, stuff so uh, we'll be using 255 as the maximum limit so 125 is the minimum value for saturation or the lighter versions of the red and 255 is the uh, darkest red uh, that uh, the program will consider and uh, same goes for uh, the brightness 70 uh, and uh, the minimum value is 70 and the max value is 255 
beyond these values uh, the color will change uh, it will not be red uh, beyond this values uh, it will be something pink uh, some somewhat pink and uh, whitish color so we don't want those colors to you know uh, get recognized and uh, uh, convolute with the kernels so we'll be using only these shades of red to you know uh, demonstrate now we we'll need to create a mask so what this mask does is it just uh, you know uh, it typically differentiates between the background and this uh, this uh, cloak part uh, the rest of the background and this cloak part so that is uh, the simplest uh, thing that i can tell you right now so it is uh, to uh, used to do that operation in range and i'll just give hsv as the input and lower red is the lower limit and upper red is the upper limit for the range of a function so what this line will do is it uh, will uh, differentiate between the uh, background rest of the background and this the cloak part or the person so that it will do that and the next thing is uh, the same again we need to uh, uh, differentiate uh, you know now now we uh, differentiated uh, this background from this uh, with respect to this but uh, now we'll have to differentiate this cloak part with respect to this background so i really hope you understand that uh, because it is kind of confusing but in first case we are uh, you know considering this part uh, as in uh, the background part but in the second case we are considering this uh, cloak part so that is how it is and we we'll need to define the range of values again so i'll just copy paste it but uh, this time the values change from 170 to 180 and uh, the saturation and the uh, value uh, brightness values remains the same so a red appears to a red uh, seems to appear in these range of values as well so we need to consider these as uh, these also but this will be mask 2 not mask 1 and after this uh, so uh, what they this this uh, these lines of code will you know consider this and uh, ignore the, the rest of the background and now we need to uh, you know uh, logically or uh, these two masks uh, that is mask 1 and mask 2 together and we'll store it in the same variable mask 1 equals mask 1 plus mask now keep in mind that this is not uh, adding this is logical or so uh, do, please do not uh, get confused with uh, addition and uh, logical oring and the next step is mask 1 equals cv2 dot morphology x no so these are uh, the these are the morphological functions you can learn more about uh, those in the open cv documentation on google so i'll just uh, explain what it does but not what it is so we need to you know morph uh, morph the um, feed that we are uh, capturing from the webcam uh, we'll be applying it or uh, we'll be applying this operation on mask 1 and cv2 dot morph open so what this does is it uh, you know reduces the noise uh, that is present in the feed so to do that uh, we will have to have some uh, kernels so to specify a kernel we can just uh, you know uh, use a numpy function np dot once and <clears throat> we'll be using a 3 cross 3 kernel so uh, this line indicates that uh, the kernel is of 3 by 3 size and 3 by 3 size and all uh, the elements of the matrix are one so it is that and np dot 
0.8 and iteration is equals to so what this means is that it will do the it, like it will uh, remove the noise continuously for two times so uh, this can vary like it can be three or four or it can be even one or it can even completely be not there but uh, you know it is uh, very good to uh, remove as much as noise uh, as much of noise as possible so i've uh, iterated it for two times you can it can vary as per your uh, needs and we'll just do the same again but this time we we'll, uh, you know uh, change this uh, operation to morph dilate now what this does is it smoothens the uh, smoothens the image or the video feed that is captured from the webcam so it will be easier to you know operate uh, de detect the edges and operate accordingly so but uh, here the iterations will not be two it will be one i'll just be doing it for once because i don't want it to smoothen too much and uh, uh, make it difficult for the program to de uh, detect the edges uh, edges and uh, you know uh, make it more uh, con clumsy so i'll just keep it one now what we need to do is uh, we need to negate the mask values and uh, you know consider uh, so far uh, we have uh, been considering considering uh, like operating on this part of uh, the uh, frame as in the cloak part now we'll have to you know work on the background as well so we we'll need to negate the mask cv2 dot i'm sorry i'll just uh, cv2 dot bitwise not and bitwise not of mask one no, i'm sorry this is not yeah after uh, calculating all the masks and operating this uh, morph open and morph dilate which are uh, to remove the noise and to uh, smoothen the image or the feed we'll uh, work on the final results so uh, as we're using mask one and mask two there it is obvious that there will be two results so uh, i'll just name this variable as result one res1 and cv2 dot bitwise and i'll bitwise and with i'll and it with a uh, background and background itself and mask will be the mask1 that is uh, what this line does is it will segment the color from uh, like it will segment the color uh, so this uh, what i can say is it is used to just you know differentiate the cloak color from the background so and the next uh, result will be cv2 dot bitwise and again and uh, this will be the foreground or the person the person like uh, the person who is holding the cloak and image again and uh, mask will be mask 2 not mask 1 note that uh, 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 all these uh, blurring and uh, I mean noise reduction and blurring will be smoothening will be performed on mask 1 itself and not uh, mask 1 and mask 2 so only the bitwise not of mask is stored in mask 2 so we are using mask 2 here to you know uh, work on this uh, this part of the cloak this result 1 will have is uh, it will have the uh, I'm sorry it will have the background uh, details uh, not this part of uh, the frame but the result 2 will be having the appropriate uh, data for this part of the frame that is the cloak part of the frame so we'll just uh, have to we'll just have to you know combine these two together 
to do that I'll just use a variable called final output and cv2 dot add weighted now what this does is it combines all the um, uh, all the uh, like uh, what this does is it combines both these results and uh, gives a final output so it will we'll have to combine result one one and result two one and zero so what these uh, one one and zero specify is that uh, this is basically a linear function and uh, we are linearly adding these two results together so uh, this is like the alpha this is like the beta and uh, this is like the gamma so what this equal uh, this line of code specifies is that uh, uh, it is as equivalent to alpha times of res, res 1 and beta times of res 2 and plus gamma so all these will be added uh, so that is how it kind of converts to a linear equation so that is what uh, this is uh, intended to do and after all the calculations and uh, uh, you know uh, the operations we'll have to obviously display the output that is uh, that looks something like this uh, so to do that what we'll do is cv2 dot im show so this uh, parameter takes uh, the, I mean this uh, function takes uh, two parameters uh, the uh, title name uh, the window title and uh, the output image uh, or in or as the output variable so the window title will be cloak project and the output will be output variable will be the and the output variable will be this variable which say which is final output so final output and so now until now we are uh, done with uh, displaying the image uh, that is the video but uh, we need to close it as well to do that I'll just say k equals cv2 dot weight key and say 10 so it will be you know like uh, this is just like waiting for uh, this period of time and if k equals 27 break so what this line of code specifies is that if uh, I hit escape key uh, it will break the uh, while loop note that all the part of code that we have written so far is in this uh, while loop so once uh, the program execution encounters uh, the click of escape key or the escape sequence so it will break the flow and uh, it will stop the execution of the program so how is uh, how do i know that it is 27 it is simple uh, escape key has an ascii code of ascii value of uh, 27 so you can just google it out to you know uh, know what uh, you know the uh, to know the ascii values of all the other keys so after this i'll have to after uh, you know the closing of this uh, or after the stopping of this execution i'll have to close the window that i opened that is of uh, the video so i'll to do that i'll just say caption capture dot release cap dot release and i'll not pass any variables because it is only one window here cv2 dot destroy all windows what this does is it uh, just closes all the windows that the program has had earlier opened to for the execution of the program so when you hit run you know when you hit run it will uh, work something like this Thank you.